What's going on my friends? I am Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U and today's Q&A day. Okay, so we have a way of doing things here on Q&A day for those of you that have not tuned in. Um, we do a little bit of trivia first. I usually pull some kind of crazy, kooky question out. <laughs> and then I give it you the answer at the end. So you do have to stay tuned to the end to find out the answer. Um, but then we have like a um, less technical section at first, and then we kind of move into more technical questions. Uh, and then at the end, it's kind of just fandom and random. We call it the technically nothing section. <laughs> How did the War of the Electric Currents begin? And what were the original motives behind it? Very open-ended, but if you think you know, throw it in the comments. This is typically like apprentices, aspiring electricians, homeowners, stuff like that. The first question is from Aaron Porter. Uh, thoughts on electric screwdrivers like the Dewalt Gyro or the Hitachi Metabo HPT. Um, why? <laughs> why use electric screwdrivers? Um, for those of you that don't know what an electric screwdriver is, it's a drill that's shaped like a screwdriver. Uh, a lot less powerful, there's no torque behind it, uh, or sometimes there's too much torque and you have to like twist the thing a certain way. They're just wonky as shit, they're not very accurate uh, a lot of a lot of like diy dads <laughs> or grandpas really my grandpa had one never fucking used it i would never use it every time i've used one i'm like this is a bullshit like joke right this is like using a ball peen hammer and showing up on a job site to like do construction uh i'm just not a fan honestly um either use a screwdriver or use a trill like why have this extra electric screwdriver? I think it's just hokey. I like to have a little bit more finesse and control over a tool. Um, I like the power, the drilling functions, the uh, hammer drill function or the impact function of the drills that I use. Um, and the fact that they have, you know, speed adjustments, torque adjustments so that you can drill really slowly or drill with a light touch or drill really heavy and hard. Um, I just don't, I don't see a reason to use one. And honestly, if I had a helper pull one out, I would probably just grab it and throw it at them. <laughs> uh, or I would just make fun of them all day. Like, what are you, what, what are you doing? What are we doing here? Um, so that's my thoughts. All right, uh, Brap Life. Ever tried stripping with linemans? Way easier and you don't need strippers. Yes, I actually do that all the time if I don't have strippers on me. Um, if I just have a pair of linemans on me, like, yeah, you can actually strip out uh, the end of a conductor by just kind of scoring it a little bit and twisting and then popping the, the sheathing off of the end. I do that all the time. Very good question. Um, you can even do it with stranded. Stranded is a little bit more difficult, which is kind of a pain in the ass to work with. But yes, Martin Davis, did, uh, did, you, took off, did you took the spring off the strippers? Oh yes, so the multi-tools video recently, uh, multi-tools two of two. I always take the springs off of strippers, off of pretty much anything. I hate the handles just opening up automatically because when I go to stick them in a pouch or in a bag or something, I, they need to be slimline and closed. Um, if they're wide open, it's just like they're harder to get into things and they're always just like flying open. I, I've always hated that having springs in tools. I control the tool, whether it's open or shut, um, based off of like how I hold the tool. And I usually keep the handle in between my fingers on one side so I can open it and close it how I want to. But more often than not, I want it closed. I will open it to use it and close it and pinch with it, but I don't need it snapping open on me all the time. So it just annoys the shit out of me that there's always springs in, in these hand tools. Uh, we got Nelson Brum. Uh, same video on the multi-tools two of two. He asks, what happened to the Racketeers Croc Jr. you used to rock? Yeah. Uh, I bought one and the little red bolt-on Romex jacket stripper attachment. Fucking wonder bar. Wunderbar. Uh, yeah, so I didn't really rock that. I had Racketeers send me a bunch of stuff one time and uh, they just wanted me to try out some of their stuff. And so I used them. It was all right. I didn't like how the handles, you know, like did the little weird uh, convex concave 
see you thing. Um, just, I don't know, I'm used to a certain feel, but I still have them rolling around in my truck. I've got like every brand of stripper that you can imagine, all the different sizes, whole configurations. So it's just a matter of like whatever I grab out of whatever bag, whatever I see first. Um, so every once in a while I use them, but I don't, I, I never really like rocked that one. The one that I use the most often is the yellow miniature Kleins, the like tiny, tiny ones. Um, just because I like how small they are and like just fits in your hand and, and you don't have like this huge tool to, you know, and the leverage point is up so high because it's such a large tool. I like that it's small and compact. Um, just seems to work for me. I don't know. I really like it. Last one for the uh, less technical questions is from Drake Jr. Any difference between C10 and master electrician license? That's a good question. Yeah, in California, they have a thing called a C10, but that is your electrical contractor's license. That's not your master license. I haven't actually heard of anybody in California having a master electrician's license. Um, I know to get your C10 license, you just have to be a journeyman for four years, uh, but it does say in their licensing and regulation area that uh, you have to be a, uh, a journeyman or higher for four years. So I'm assuming that maybe there was a master or is some kind of master, or maybe if you're a master from a different state, you can come in. Um, I'm not 100% on that. I've never worked in California, but I know a lot of journeymen after four years can just still be a journeyman and get a C10, get their contractor's license. So the 10 is just the electrician designation. There's like C2 and C17, like C36, I think is a plumber, um, but it just means contractor. So in Texas, we have journeyman and then we have master, but you can be a master and work for somebody else, or you can be a master and have a contractor's license, which contractor just means company. Um, so I can work as a master, be a master for somebody else's company, their contractor's license, or I can have my own contractor's license, which is my own company and still be a master. So a little bit different thing, um, but it is a good question. I don't know if they even have a master license. I've looked around on their websites and stuff and it just talks about residential electrician and general electrician and uh, you know the journeyman designation and the apprentice de designation. It talks about, and in agnosium just doesn't talk about master at all. So I'm assuming they don't have one. All right, now let's move on to the more technical questions. All right, so a little bit more on the technical side, we have the Serious Clam. It's hard for me to take that name serious. Uh, question, in a mobile home, the cable from the meter to the main panel, which is inside, does the cable need to be in conduit where it comes up through the floor to the panel? That's kind of hard to answer because I don't know what kind of cable you're talking about. Um, when you say cable, are you talking about like a cable assembly, like a cord that already has manufactured conductors inside of it, like a rubber SO cord or something? Um, or are you talking about like SER or SEU, like service entrance conductor? Are you talking about Romex? Uh, it kind of depends. So let's look uh, 2020. And what did you say? Mobile home. All right, so mobile and manufactured homes is gonna be article 550. Uh, in 550.10 under power supply, we have A feeder, B power supplied, uh, plow, 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 power supply cord, C attachment plug cap, um, D overall length of power cord, F point of entrance, and G protected. So, uh, I would read, A says feeder, the power supply of a motorhome home shall be in a feeder assembly uh, consisting of not more than one listed 50 amp mobile home power supply cord or a permanently installed feeder. Um, if it has a power supply cord that comes with it, that's going to be in B. If it has the attachment plug cap, that's going to be C. Uh, what I think, uh, I was going to read all of these, but I realized that, that would be silly. It's going to take so much time. So what I'm going to do is go to F where it says point of entrance, because that's really what we're talking about here. The point of entrance of the feeder assembly to the mobile home, mobile home shall be in the exterior wall, floor, or roof. G, protected, where the cord passes through walls or floors your situation. It shall be protected by means of conduits and bushings or equivalent. There's your answer. 
The cord shall be permitted to be installed within the mobile home walls, provided a continuous raceway, which is conduit, having a maximum size of inch and a quarter, is installed from the branch circuit panel board from the panel itself to the underside of the mobile home floor. So boom, there you go. That was again, 550.10 G and uh, F and G. But that, that's assuming that what you are talking about is the feeder coming into the floor. You're not talking about some kind of attachment plug that's got like a, um, a uh, or like, you know, power supply cord that has like an attachment plug or something. Anyways, all of that stuff, 550.10, um, if you want to read more. Uh, Roger K on the Bad Breakers video. I always mean to ask, you talk about 240 and 208, but I haven't seen anything about 277 lighting circuits. Malls have that here in SoCal, Southern California. Uh, maybe you can enlighten me on your next show. Great channel, Dustin, digging it. Thanks, Roger K. Yes, 277, 240, 208, a lot of twos. People are like, what, 230, 220, 240, 208, 277, what does all that mean? Um, so when you have 240, like in a single phase service, you can have 240 volts. In a three phase uh, service, you can have 208, but you can also have 240. Hold on a second, I need to find Bada Bing, this guy. All right, so single phase, You've got incoming power from uh, one phase to the other phase is 240 volts. When we tap a neutral, we can get 120 from one phase to neutral or the other phase to neutral. We get 120 from each of them or 240 between them. In three phase, depending on if we have a delta, which this would be a coil, this would be a coil, this would be a coil, uh, we can have 240 240, 240, between any two of the hots, uh, so 240, 240, and 240, we could tap that a certain way to get 120. Between you know this and neutral, this and neutral, you end up getting 208 in between it because of the mathematics of uh, um, something that has three of something that has circular motion. We always have this thing square root of three or 1.732. I'm not gonna get into all that right now. But anyways, mathematically it happens so that we have one leg that just has 208 uh, to neutral if you have a delta three phase configuration. The other thing you could have is a Y configuration where you have the same, notice three hots, three hots, but these coils are all uh, tied together in the center. This is a Y configuration. This is a delta. But anyways, you have, uh, you know, from hot to neutral, you'd have 120, 120, 120. And instead of 240, you end up between these two hots, these two hots, and these two hots, you end up getting 208 between all of them. So really to say 240 and 208, kind of the same thing. 240 equals 208. No, it does not. Um, but it's a very similar thing. It just means that this is what you're, uh, two of your phase conductors or two of your hots to when they're combined. If this is the power configuration that the building is fed with, um, it's going to have 240 between those two hots. And then if it's fed with Y, it's going to have 208 between the hots. Um, 277 is a different thing. So say we've got three phase and we're on a 480 volt system. So just like this Delta, we've got 480, 480, 480. Um, so between each one of the hots, you've got 480. If we were to provide a neutral, that 480 ends up being 277 from one hot to neutral and 277 from one hot to neutral. And again, it's the square root of three. If you take 480 volts prov that's provided and you divide that, that's percentage, not divide, <laughs> sorry and you divide that by square root of three, you're gonna get 277 volts. Same thing if you were to take 208 divided by square root of three, you're gonna get 120 volts. So that's that's saying the three phase environment, basically um, because of the square root of three, because there's three of these and it's circular motion, um, how you know circular motion translates. 
um, and where these windings are actually at. They're 120 degrees apart. So again, I'm not going to go like I'm speaking in generals here, but that is why you get those things. So 277 volts uh, a lot of times is used for lighting. It's basically like 120 volts is. It's just that we generally use it for lighting only. There's lights that are rated at 120 volts and 240 volts and 208 and 277, 480. You can't have like receptacles at 277. I mean, you could, you could, you just, nobody would do that. You know, like it's, that would be such a weird, rare thing that you're probably plugging a light that's rated 277 into that receptacle. So um, there's like, you know, a lot of like weird random things that are, that are that way, but, uh, Anyways, that's just to say 277 is used in lighting all over the place. Anywhere that there's a 480 volt system that is actually utilizing lighting in the building, it's going to have 277 lighting. Um, you might have a 480 setup where there is no neutral and it's literally just all three phase 480 because it's running equipment and it's either two pole breakers or three pole breakers. There's no need for a neutral because it's not running any lighting. Um, but if you do have a... Um, a grounded 480 volt system and you're providing a neutral for lighting, then that's what you would use it for. But again, 208 is for running appliances. Typically 240 is for running appliances. That just means two hots, two hots. So typically you're like gonna be running motors and air conditioners and stuff like that, just like you would with uh, 480 volts. But if you need lighting, you would either do 120 or 277. They're very similar kinds of things. Hope that I didn't make that more difficult than it needed to be. Sorry, uh, but I do have a video called Voltages or something like that. Um, so you could check that out. Just go to the YouTube. Go to the YouTubes and type in Voltages. There's a video on there. I explain a lot of those things. 12 volts, like all the kind, all, uh, all kinds of that stuff. Chase Shirley on the Bad Breakers video. Um, can you do one on how to tell if a light needs a ballast or new lamps? That would be a beneficial to a lot of guys. No books ever really give a clear answer. So, I mean, that's a loaded question, right? There's a lot of different kinds of lighting. Um, so depending on what kind of lighting you have, it's gonna show signs differently. Incandescent lighting doesn't use a ballast. Um, halogen, you know, like those, those bulbs are gonna like act way differently when they're going out. Typically, they're just going to go out. They're just going to be really hot. They're going to there's an actual piece of metal that's going to burn out, and they're just going to go bad. Um, then you've got things that are ballasted, so you might have like um, fluorescent fixtures. You might have LEDs, though that's a driver, not really a ballast, but it is a ballast still kind of. Um, they're going to act a certain way, and then you've got HID lighting, which is like you know, huge ballasts, a lot of times driving like a high pressure sodium lamp um, or a uh, metal halide or something like that. So they're gonna act a little bit differently depending on if they're pulse start ballasts, um, probe start ballasts, depending on the kind of lamp. And, and there's a lot of different situations. Um, but and a lot of times with those as well, you're gonna have like a, an igniter inside of it. Um, you're gonna have a capacitor inside of it. So those are a lot more complex in what they do. And there's more, more parts essentially that can go wrong. So it really just depends, like I can't give you one answer. It depends on what kind of lighting you're looking at. That's why you're not finding a lot of answers in books um, because it can be a lot of different things depending on what you're what you're looking for. So um, maybe if, if you want, I don't know, maybe I'll do a video on that. Drake, let's write that down. Maybe I'll do a video on like how to diagnose all of the different types of, of bulbs um, and ballasts and capacitors and, and how to figure out what's probably happening. Um, okay, then we've got Devante Gordon. Uh, can you show us how to connect a photo cell to a light? Yes. Okay, so say we've got electrical panel. La, that's my panel. And we have light. And we want to turn light on. Well, we have to either have like a switch, right? Like that's how you would turn a light on is if you go and flip a switch, um, you would have a, a hot home run that leaves the panel, leaves from a breaker over here somewhere, goes to the light, leaves the light, goes to the, the black or the hot side of that light bulb. And then we'd have a neutral that comes back and the neutral lands on the neutral bus. And then that neutral leaves and this hot leaves and we go up to the transfer. And we have a complete circuit here. So 
say we don't want to manually push a button to turn on a light switch. We want to control it by some kind of automatic means. We want it to take care of itself. Well, what we could do is put a photo cell. So a photo cell is kind of like a cube looking thing with a, uh, kind of looks like an electrical meter. It's got this little eye on it. And when you cover the eye, um, it changes the state and it allows current to go through. It's basically just like a switch. But inside of here, there's kind of a little coil. There's like a little circuit that uh, engages and disengages a contact inside of here. So if you look uh, one of, I don't really know how to draw this in like a schematic sort of way. I'm just gonna draw it with the actual components. So maybe that's less confusing. Um, on a photo cell, you're gonna have a black conductor. You're gonna have a neutral conductor and you're gonna have a red conductor. Uh, so you can kind of think of this as the switch leg. You can think of this as the hot and this is your neutral. Well, this light needs to have a neutral back. So if the, if the conductors actually go into like some kind of enclosure here or something like that, then we would take this neutral and wire nut it with all of the other neutrals. It has to also complete a circuit. So this is its own circuit or, you know, like this has its own circuit inside of it. It's got its own uh, little coil. So the neutral needs to get hooked up and needs a definite path back to the panel. The hot would come off the panel. So we'd hook the black in, the neutral is going back, and then our switch leg is what we would bring out to the light. Actually, I'm not gonna do that in red. I'm just gonna do it in black because it's probably going to be black out in the field. The only thing that's gonna be red, oops, shit, sorry. The only thing that's gonna be red is the lead that's coming off of here. That just lets you know this is the line side, that's the load side. So that's pretty much it. It resembles a switch. The only thing is on a switch, we have like the hot or line side, just like this is the line side. This is our load side. We would have the load side or the leg. And we just don't need a neutral on this switch. There is nothing to hook a neutral up to. So the neutral would just pass through and go straight to the light from the panel. So hope that helps. It's just introducing a neutral other than that, it's pretty much a regular switch. Um, this photo eye will build up a difference of potential or will balance out and, and no longer have a difference of potential. Um, that's how it works. But I'm gonna do a whole different video on how photo cells work at a later time because that's more than I wanna actually get into in this short video. All right, next we're gonna do the uh, fandom random section. These are just like comments from goofy people. <laughs> Chris Klikowski, uh, I want to buy the Dustin Do All multi-tool. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but that's a funny comment. The Dustin Do All multi-tool, like a tool that like makes me do everything. I don't like that. Uh, Mike Meyer, Japan, even though this is a short, he's talking about the shorts, uh, Ohm's Law one, even though this was a short one, I just need this formula. I just needed this formula today and was surprised to see your video on this. Coincidence? Yes, bro, I'm in your head. I knew, I heard the sparky gods talked to me and said you needed that video. So like, hold me down, bro. <laughs> We've got Maxwell R at Electrician U. Dude, your videos have gotten a lot better recently. I'm enjoying them a lot more now. You could see that you've put a lot of effort into producing them. Yeah. Um, after doing this five years, you know, like I'm finally kind of figuring it out. I'm starting to figure it all out. Um, I, you got to try a lot of stuff. You just got to try a lot of shit, throw it at walls, see what sticks, what people like, what people hate. You got to get judged by a lot of people. You got to have a lot of pricks, write Hateful comments. You know, you have to have like actually like, you know, kind, good people, instructors reach out and be like, Hey, you said that wrong or that's not right. And be like, Oh fuck. You know, like now I got to re-record the whole thing. It's a learning process. Um, so 
you're seeing in real time me learning things and talking about them and you're seeing that goes for like video editing that goes for recording and quality and like backgrounds and all of this shit man it's taken so long it's take it takes all of my life 24 7 7 days a week 365 um my entire life is dedicated to this so uh it really makes me happy to hear people show appreciation and notice that there's uh there's effort going into this shit because there is there's a lot Colby Payton, you should definitely post videos seven days a week because it kills me waiting for each video to be posted. Being that I've watched them all, in all seriousness, keep up the good work and thanks for all the knowledge. I'm in the process of searching for an apprenticeship and I'm excited to get started in the trade. Dude, good luck with all of that. That's really good to hear. I'm glad that, uh, glad that I've lied very cunningly <laughs> and seduced you into this trade. Uh, good luck with all of it. No way in hell I can do seven videos a week. I can barely do three of them. And the ones on Wednesdays are like other videos I've already done that we're just chopping down. So like once I actually have to start producing two new whole videos every week again, and then doing the lives and doing these pre-recorded Q and A's on Fridays, dude, it's just a lot. It's so much to try to get three videos out. Um, if I, if it was like me just talking and saying opinions and like flying through stuff, I could probably do that. Um, but yeah, I just can't do it. It's too much. So sorry, that'll never happen. <laughs> uh, anyways. All right. Need to wrap this thing up. Uh, we've got the answer to our trivia. How did the war of the electric currents begin? And what were the original motives behind it? If you think the current war started with Tesla and Edison, you're wrong. It was all happening kind of at the same time, but it was really a function of Westinghouse and Tesla. The answer, the war of the electric currents began in December 9th of 1887 when Thomas Edison, who had declared that he was against the death penalty and wanted no part of an electric chair. So they were trying to come up with a way to kill people. This is when the electric chair became a thing. Uh, he changed his mind and wrote the New York State Commission that the quickest and cleanest way of applying the death penalty would be to use an alternating current machine produced by George Westinghouse. He was trying to be a dick because he was a DC guy, didn't like alternating current. So he thought, well, I'm going to tell everybody to start using AC to kill people instead of DC. It's better at killing people. And then we can say Westinghouse kills people with his dangerous alternating current kind of being a fucker, right? So Edison was furious that Westinghouse, a hugely successful inventor in Pittsburgh, corporate magnate, was invading his field with what seemed a better product. So he knew it was better. Edison was determined to convince the public that Westinghouse's kind of electricity was deadly. Edison was a great man, and this was certainly not his finest hour. Seeing the dark side of Edison was most fascinating. So thanks for putting up with all the craziness and sitting through this whole thing. Appreciate your guys' attention. If you're not a channel member and you want to be a channel member, there's a thousand volt membership, hit join. There's also a 480 volt and 120 volt membership. Uh, each one of them has little things that they come with. 480 volt, you get your name up on the screen. Um, 120 volt, you get some like uh, icons, emojis and stuff like that in live chat. We do chat every other Friday, so you can throw all that stuff out. Kind of like rep your squad sort of thing with your little icon, depending on how long you've been a channel member. So love you crazy people. Thank you so much for everything that you do, all of the attention you give me, all of the time you spend watching my mouth spew words from it. Appreciate all the love. Thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Best music and video.